Hello, everybody. My name is Elia Jan, working at CSCS, the Swiss National Supercomputing Center in Lugano, Switzerland. And my talk today is about orchestrating Kubernetes clusters on HPC infrastructure. So first of all, some words about me. I'm 29 years old, I'm Swiss, and I'm system engineer about from since uh, about 10 years and working at CSCS since uh, 2020. My hobbies are everything what's motorcycle related and uh, to travel. And if you want to contact me, here is my email. So just to introduce uh, what we are doing at CSCS, we have this new uh, HPC system, which is called ALPS. It's an, it's an HPE machine, Cray EX, using a Shasta architecture and the Slingshot network to interconnect its nodes. It uses the infrastructure as code uh, methodology to configure all the, the system, and it's running different workload types in the, what we call uh, V clusters. So it's like having an abstraction of the of the cluster, including classic HPC um, jobs, so login nodes, uh, submit jobs on the on the nodes, and also serving grid-like uh, workloads for WCG, for example, or CTA and so on. Regarding Kubernetes at CSCS, we are leveraging Rancher in order to provide uh, the Kubernetes service at the center, and we have three main scenarios. The bare metal one, the virtual one, and the Alps one. So the bare metal one is the scenario where we want to use commodity hardware, but running um, Kubernetes natively on it, so without a hypervisor or virtual machines. And we are using this, for example, for the storage element of the um, WCG. So it's running a Kubernetes on, with the cache on it. Or for uh, our Elasticsearch cluster, for example, where we want to use local disk and have uh, the maximum performance out of them. Um, on the Alps side, we can deploy uh, Kubernetes clusters on the HPC machine using Rancher as well, using K3S or RKE and uh, a benefit of the HPC infrastructure uh, on, on that cluster. We are currently having some performance issues. For example, I will talk in the next slide. And the virtual scenario where we integrate the rancher with a Harvester, also by SUSE, and VMware in order to spin up uh, Kubernetes clusters on the fly. Everything, all the cluster is uh, now moving to Cilium. We started with Calico, but now we are moving to Cilium CNI, and all the application and configuration is uh, managed with, uh, with Argo CD. So about the main challenges, we have diskless nodes, for example, on the, on the HPC machine, so we had to uh, use uh, Ceph as external storage to, um, to preserve the state of the clusters. This is something that we had to deal with. Regarding the performance and scaling, when we start having many nodes, we, we saw also a huge impact on the, on the storage, and having Ceph to cope with uh, high load is not so, so easy. Regarding the management, Rancher really helped us because having this overview and manage the, the deployments and the upgrades from a central point was uh, very useful. All of this and bringing Kubernetes on top of an already pretty complex system like uh, the HP uh, EX machine using uh, Shasta is pretty complex to, to manage. So these are the challenges. Uh, we are, as said, using Argo CD with the app of apps of apps uh, paradigm to manage all the, the applications. And in fact, we have uh, a single uh, top level application called controller which then uh, configures Argo CD itself and then deploys the underlying uh, application on the downstream clusters and enforcing the state as well. In conclusion, we are building Alps uh, uh, going with the aim of uh, using cloud native uh, technologies and we are also waiting and we just upgraded the Slingshot um, network to the version two in order to leverage the VLANs as well on the Alps machine. And Rancher, Argo CD, VMware, and Harvester are the tools that really uh, helped us um, build this Kubernetes infrastructure in an easy and uh, manageable way 
and it's very fun to, to work with that. As you can see, it's a work in progress. Nothing is written in stone. We are still learning, we are still exploring, we are still finding new, new technologies, and we, we are continually uh, evolving. So this is, was my presentation. I hope it was uh, useful, and I'm around for any question. Thank you. Any question? I'll, I'll jump in and ask one. You mentioned diskless nodes. Is that uh, something that works out of the box for Kubernetes, or did you have to do something special? Actually, we started mounting uh, in memory to store, for example, the, um, the etcd database or so on. But then at node reboots, you, you lose anything. So we wanted to have also the uh, persistence of the cluster when we reboot the, the nodes. And so we had to mount, for example, Ceph RBD volumes coming from an external storage in order to have this, uh, this persistence. But the, the nodes themselves have no disk at all? Exactly. <clears throat> and the bootstrap of the node to like run the kubelet and have some sort of configuration? This is obviously. done uh, via uh, Rancher using uh, the custom cluster. So you actually get uh, an URL that you can download the bootstrap script and it's bootstrapping uh, the Kubernetes cluster using, uh, using Rancher okay. with this script. Thank you. Um, can you just uh, give us some, some numbers about the scale you're running at and what, uh, what challenges, if any, you're facing with scheduling or queuing? Yeah, we are seeing this uh, impact when running the WCG workloads, where actually we are also not really aware of what we are going to get as jobs. And the underlying storage is, uh, is Ceph. We have uh, around now 100 nodes of Alps uh, dedicated to WCG. And when there is a high load on the storage backend, here is, uh, is where we, we saw the, the problems. So we are actually exploring new storage backends for uh, for this. This is the real point. <laughs> Any other question? We have time for one more, maybe? Thank right, you. Thank you. <laughs>